Hey everybody, back again with another video. A little different today. Uh, as you know, this truck here, I've had it for about six years. I've been driving it 75 miles one way to work. It has about 250,000 miles on it. It gets decent gas mileage for a truck, like just under 18, but in the grand scheme of things, that's still not great gas mileage especially when I'm still trying to pay for a house and have two kids to feed and another one on the way. And it's been a long time coming, but I finally did it. And I have bought me a gas saver and I'm going to, I've been driving it for a week. So I'm going to kind of look it over and give my review of it. I know you guys are used to American V8s and whatnot. And that's my general, uh, focus as well but you can't argue that a honda is about the best thing you're going to get for a gas saver as far as reliability and fuel mileage and holding their value so what i have here it is a 2016 honda civic lx sedan i bought it uh used of course 2016 uh has a clean title bought it with about 94,000 miles on it which is low for a honda it's black. It's a good little car so far, so we'll just kind of get into it. Just kind of walk around first. I hate the hubcaps. That is my one complaint on it. They don't look great. I don't like the way that you can see the the bullet hole steel wheels behind it. I don't like it, but other than that, the looks of the car overall, I like it. It's a decent looking car. A lot of cars in this size range, compact, subcompact, they're ugly. This one ain't bad to look at. It does set kind of low, which, I mean, you know the Buick, I love low cars, but I went off the edge of the road the other day and uh, ripped the little aluminum skid pan out from underneath the engine, and uh, so I've got to address that at some point, but it's still running and driving. But we'll take a look at her here, walk around, the other side we'll check it out i did not clean it i'm just going to preface that because i drive it every day but uh interior is nice it's nothing's broken inside everything's easy to get to nice looking steering wheel has a backup camera i don't have the key with me when i turn it on and show you it's dusty uh normal shifter here has the economy mode which i think Helps save a little gas, but might make it a little sluggish if you're trying to merge into traffic. And I don't know how it is as far as wear and tear on the mechanical. So I don't use it because even without using it, I'm after driving a week, I'm already getting almost 39 and a half miles a gallon. So that is great. It also has sport mode here. I think, I think it's what the S is for. I don't know. I'm probably wrong and I should have researched before I made this video. So I'm going to go ahead and preface that as well. I'm full of crap but uh just giving an honest review of the car i love it i'm six foot two i have plenty of room in here i don't feel cramped the steering wheel is comfortable the console is comfortable good height for my shoulders steering wheel sets in a nice position for your hands um even with the seats all the way back my kids can still fit in their booster seats and they're they've got plenty of leg room they're not like bumping into the back of my seat so I think that is great for a subcompact car. It, uh, let's see, let's kind of show you a little more of the back here. Um, decent sounding radio in it. Uh, I'm trying to think of other features it has. I'm not used to, I guess it has traction control. Um, I haven't even looked it all over yet. Trunk buttons in the door. Um, AC blows nice and cold. I have read online that, uh, Air conditioning can be an issue with these. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I think they've extended the warranty on those like a little bit longer than 100,000 to kind of compensate for it. So that's good. But so far I haven't had any issues with that. The one issue I have had, and I've read it's also an issue, in the morning when I'm driving to work and it's still cold out, it's fine. But in the evening after it gets hot, I don't know what it has to do with the ambient temperature, but the electric, power steering gets kind of grabby and when you're trying to turn from dead center 
it just feels like it takes a little more pressure to break it to get it to turn and you just you kind of fighting with the steering wheel a little bit but at the same time I don't want to spend the money to put a new steering rack in it and it's tolerable when I'm getting 39 miles a gallon so I can deal with a lot more stuff than some people can most people that would buy a car if they noticed that they'd be taking them right back to the dealership complaining but I put up with more crap than I probably should maybe just because the way I was raised growing up we didn't have much we kind of made do with what we had and we're happy with it but anyway uh trunk has plenty of room in it plenty of room to fit the shield that I ripped off I'm taking it here soon to one of my buddies and I'm going to have him service the CVT in it the transmission and I'm going to just have him figure out how to get that back on there when I take it to him but that's another thing with those cars the Hondas will run forever but it says with the, the CVT here you do need to maintain them regularly or they'll give issues so uh, they recommend every 30,000 miles to just you know drain the fluid and replace it and uh, so I've already ordered the uh, the genuine Honda CVT transmission fluid waiting on that to come in I'm gonna service the transmission in it and we'll pop the hood and look at the engine real quick I should have done that before I got out Uh, here we go. Yep, kind of hard to pop a hood and hold a phone at the same time. Here we go. Get the brace under here. That's one thing with these little cars. They still have hood braces instead of the hydraulic cylinders to hold the hood up. But this one has the 2.0 four cylinder in it which from what i gather is pretty much indestructible and run forever as long as you take care of it and i love it it's it's peppy this car is quick for as small as it is and it i have no trouble staying up with the flow of traffic runs and drives great doesn't make any racket um just a, a good engine I know there's these engines and the other ones have like the 1.5 liter turbo. And I think there's a few more issues with those, but even then they're still really good engines. Um, but that's under the hood. I've noticed the headlights are a little fogged up. I've got a kit where I had cleaned up the headlights on my 91 Chevy to polish them. So I probably polish the headlights up on this thing eventually get them looking a little better. Again, I still hate these god awful hubcaps. Um, But I, I did get a uh, did get a good deal on the car as well. I paid ten thousand two hundred dollars for it, which uh, is at the lo the lower end of what they say these cars should go for in the condition it's in. They can go upwards, you know, twelve five. This same car, same condition. So um, I think I got a good deal on it. I'm happy with what I spent. I have no complaints. I felt like I got a good deal. And the best thing is, even with what the car payment is on this, because I think I paid $3,500 down on it, so I'm paying like $150 a month for five years. With the car payment and what I'm spending on gas in this car to drive to work every day a week, I'm still saving money for what it costs to drive that thing to work every day. I think every time I filled it up, it cost me like $75, $80, bucks, and I was having to fill up like three times a week, so just do the math there um I'm, i was kind of wanting a honda whenever i started looking for cars because just you hear about reliability issues on a lot of other small cars i drove some older uh older vehicles that were cheaper but i, I think i drove a, a 2010 subaru legacy and it just it felt clunky and it didn't really get good gas mileage at all really for what it should you think it should get for a small car it was nice i mean it had leather and all kinds of stuff in it all-wheel drive but it was just not a good fit i drove a i think a 2014 hyundai sonata and it had lower miles than this and it just felt like it was worn out already it was not a good car some people may have hyundais and love them i didn't care for it much um but you don't hear a lot of bad things about honda I had considered a Chevy Cruze because we had one a long time ago in 
2014, but we bought it new, so one, we didn't have any issues with it. And, you know, because it's brand new, and you just hear that they don't have the best longevity. And where I'm putting almost 40,000 miles a year on a car, I need something that's going to last a while. So, I got a Honda, and I'm happy with it. Um, overall, you can't go wrong. Um, just... It's a good car, it drives good. It's not a luxury machine, you know, it's bare bones, but it's considering, I mean, it has more options than my truck does. So I'm happy and I don't need a lot of stuff. Even with the truck, I'd be happy if it had vinyl floors and hand crank windows, but you can't find that anymore unless you get like a V6 work truck. But um, anyway, there's my new Honda and I'm happy with it. I'm happy about all that money I'm saving. Um, also got my wife a car. We may do a video on it later. She had told her Honda about a month ago. We finally found us a 2023 Traverse rebuilt title with only 17,000 miles on it. It drives really good. I like the way it feels. We had the old style Traverse a while back. We had a 2015 and it just felt very clunky compared to this thing. This thing drives smoother, has more get up and go. I know they change the transmissions in them. Went from like a six speed to a nine speed. I think they still had that same 3.6 liter engine in them that uh, some people don't care for, but it's to, it, I'm happy with it. She's happy with it. It's a good, smooth driving car. She doesn't put the miles on them like I do. So I think we'll be all right as long as we maintain it. But uh, until next time, thanks for checking out whatever I decide to talk about. Y'all have a good one little addendum at the end of the video here i did my research after the fact like any normal person would and uh realized that the s does not stand for sport mode in the cvt transmissions this is drive this is second and this is low so anything that you heard me say earlier in the video referring to that as sport mode disregard i was wrong uh but anyway thanks